A few years back, Egyptologists revealed they found a mysterious black goo, with them saying that it was used to cover mummies. Several artifacts and mummies were covered in this mysterious black goo, and after tests were conducted, the team said they were able to trace it to the 19th and 22nd dynasty. It's reported that one of the mummies that was found to be covered in this substance was a priest to the sun god Amun and said that he passed away almost 3,000 years ago. After this, he was placed into a large wooden coffin and had the black goo poured over him. Archaeologists had noticed that this substance was used on various mummies and also artifacts that were found inside these ancient burial sites and so they decided to conduct a variety of tests to find out more about it. The British Museum was able to find out more about this substance and what its exact purpose was. It's reported that researchers in the area were able to collect over 100 samples of this black goo, saying that some of these samples were vaporized in a process called gas chromatography. After this, they were placed through a tube which helped separate the molecules. Dr. Kate Fulcher, research assistant in the museum's Department of Scientific Research, said the following about the experiment. We discovered that the goo is made of a combination of plant oil, animal fat, tree resin, beeswax and bitumen, which is solid crude oil. The exact ingredients vary from one coffin to the next, but the goo was always made from some of these. End quote. Interestingly, she also said that there were other ingredients inside the black goo that they were unable to detect, saying that they likely degraded to the point that they could no longer be picked up on. Archaeologists said that this goo had been found in wooden figurines, large boxes to help bond them, and also coffins. Even King Tutankhamun's tomb contained figurines that were covered in the black goo, but researchers said that as of right now these had not been analysed. One of the reasons this substance was created the way it was is because the ancient Egyptians thought that the colour black symbolises rebirth. Dr. Kate Fulcher continued with the following. Osiris was called the Black One in various texts and is often depicted with black skin and in the guise of a mummified body. Black is also the colour associated with the silt deposited on the banks of the River Nile after the annual flood receded. It could therefore be reasoned that the practice of coating coffins in black goo links the coffin to regeneration associated with Osiris. The archaeologists also noticed that the black goo helped to bond the coffins together, and one idea was that this was to stop robbers from being able to steal them. The researchers found that this substance wasn't plentiful and that only the elite of ancient Egypt would have had access to it. Large amounts of it was found inside various tombs throughout Egypt, with scientists saying some of it went missing and some was cleaned off when the artifacts were first found. The black goo has been found in coffins from the Third Intermediate Period, but Dr. Fulcher said that further excavations could reveal that this goo was used during different periods. A recent discovery made in Sudan also showed that this black goo was present, and this was because it was under Egyptian control. Not only does this show us that there were elite members living in this region, but it's also direct evidence that the ancient Egyptians had established a trade route with them. Archaeologists have known for some time now that the ancient Egyptians were advanced in many areas, and one discovery that proved this was that of the Great Sphinx of Giza. When the ancient Greek civilization first journeyed to Egypt and laid witness to its incredible methods of construction, megalithic structures, advanced cities and technologies, and incredible strides in mathematics and philosophy. Not only were they completely intrigued by this, but they quickly worked to try to classify what they saw and provide it with the names we know today. When the ancient Greeks came across the large stone structure that depicted a lion with the face of a man, Reminding the Greeks of the stories of the Sphinx recorded in the struggle of Oedipus, they quickly named the structure the Sphinx as an ode to their own culture seen in the Egyptian culture. However, outside of this original encounter, nothing else was known about the strange structure. In fact, new evidence and research today has found that it could very well be possible that the Sphinx structure itself is far older than supposed Egyptian writings and documents proclaim it to be. One of the main reasons for why the Sphinx has been dated its current age of being only 4,500 years old is not due to carbon dating or other reliable efforts made to accurately measure its date, but rather because of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics and documents that detail that the Sphinx was supposedly created during the reign of Egypt's fourth dynasty. Unfortunately, it was recently discovered that these documents could very well not be legitimate, 
and that the pharaoh of the fourth dynasty forged them for the sole purpose of taking credit of another past pharaoh's works, a common practice amongst pharaohs to rewrite history and take the honor of a past pharaoh's lifelong efforts. This was discovered not by taking a closer inspection at the Sphinx, but rather discoveries made in the tombs of long-deceased kings of Egypt. Originally a theory put forward by the groundbreaking author Robert Temple, there appeared to be overwhelming evidence that the Sphinx we know today was actually an attempt made by a pharaoh of the fourth dynasty to do nothing more than to claim the works of those before him. Evidence for this can be found when analyzing the head-to-body ratio. In fact, the head on the Sphinx is so small that many had often believed upon first sight that it could have been grinded down from a much more massive structure. The second piece of evidence is provided by the hieroglyphics located at the temple of Tep Tu Fu, that outline in great detail that the original god of ancient Giza was Anubis, and the accounts and images of Anubis in his jackal form are drawn all throughout the site in the same pose as of the body of the Sphinx, with no mention of a lion of any kind at the ancient city. Interestingly enough, this exact same pose was discovered in one of the only tombs of an Egyptian pharaoh ever discovered that had been completely undisturbed since his burial, the tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun. Within King Tut's tomb is a shrine to Anubis that demonstrates an exact scale of the Sphinx statue, but with the head of a jackal to represent Anubis, showing in overwhelming evidence that the original statue at the ancient city of Giza was supposed to be that of a jackal-headed Anubis and not that of a lion body with a human head. So where do we get the idea of a human head and a lion body? The truth is, the only reason why the statue is referred to as a sphinx is because of old Greek mythologies, such as those of Oedipus, that talk about a lion with the head of a man called a sphinx, but no such symbol exists in that of ancient Egypt. This means that the hieroglyphic texts that describe the sphinx with a human head to represent the pharaoh of the fourth dynasty was nothing more than a forgery by the then pharaoh to take credit for a great statue of which he had not created or designed. In fact, a former pharaoh gives a great account about providing his royal dog a grand burial at the site of ancient Giza. In this text, his argument for why he had such a royal burial for what has been speculated to be his guard dog was due to his want and need to have the dog buried before the great god Anubis. Not only definitively proving that the Sphinx was originally that of the god Anubis in the jackal form, but also that the structure itself was created during the pre-dynastic times long before any pharaoh could claim ownership of its creation. This could very well mean that not only was the creation of the Sphinx older than that of the dynastic reigns of Egypt, but that perhaps the structure is older than the Egyptian civilizations themselves. Further evidence of this theory can be found when analyzing the recent archaeological finds of strange bones discovered all throughout ancient Egypt. It is well known amongst Egyptologists that the ancient Egyptians treasured animals of all kinds, believing them to be the representation of their gods. It's due to this obsession that strange structures and bones from animals all around the world, even from areas previously believed to not have been operating open trade routes, have surfaced all across ancient Egyptian cities. Described as Egyptian zoos, strange hieroglyphics and designs have come forward showing evidence that not only were the early Egyptians capable of owning strange beasts from around the world, but that they possibly possessed an extinct species of woolly mammoth. Dubbed as the world's first zoo, a 6,000-year-old ancient Egyptian cemetery was uncovered filled with the remains of wild animals from all around the world that should have been unable to collect from the reaches of early man for thousands of years to come. Skeletons of ostriches, crocodiles, leopards and other exotic animals were found alongside pools of water, large fenced-in cages, and a potential animal hospital filled with removed molars, teeth, claws, and evidence of animal surgeries. Though the importance of animals regarding the Egyptian religion was widely known, the evidence of the global reach of the species available to them, including species long believed to be extinct, has been a mystery that even the most elite of archaeologists and Egyptologists have failed to explain. This is odd, mostly due to the fact that it is widely believed by historians and archaeologists all around the world that the oldest civilization to exist was merely 10,000 years old. However, evidence in the fossil record shows that the modern-day intelligent human has been around for more than 50,000 years. So why is it then that the oldest cities don't start appearing until the past 10,000 years? It might have to do with the evidence of the extinct animals recorded in Egypt. 
The woolly mammoth was one of many distinct megafauna that went extinct at around the same time in the fossil record, merely 10,000 years ago. These extinct species included the mastodon, short-faced bear, the giant ground sloth, and many others. In fact, when Charles Darwin first visited the areas near the Galapagos Island, when he originally discovered the ground sloth bones, they were so fresh that he believed them to be a still-living species of megafauna. So why was it then that around 10,000 years ago all of these species went extinct? Partly due to three strange reasons. Large fires, a massive flood, and a sudden ice age. The evidence for these three events are widely known by archaeologists and research scientists, with them saying that the fossil record shows that all around the Earth appeared to be massive fires that were followed by a rapid cooling event. Many experts had originally speculated that perhaps a massive meteorite strike could have caused such a phenomenon, but no large craters supporting the theory had yet been discovered at the time of the original publications. However, this year, a massive crater underneath an ice sheet in Greenland shows a tremendous impact point where a meteor could have hit, generating more than 700 megatons of force. Any human civilization at the time, regardless of how advanced, would have been completely wiped off the face of the Earth in such a massive meteor strike. All of this happening at not only around the same time as a massive extinction event, but also around the same time the oldest civilizations would have been constructed. Could this be evidence then that perhaps the pyramids and the sphinx, as well as many other advancements made in megalithic structures and creations, could actually more accurately come from the efforts of human beings from before this catastrophic event, and the Egyptians were merely the surviving peoples to pick up where humanity left off? Given the incredible advancements we have made in the past 10,000 years, this could very well mean that the humans before the event could have been significantly more advanced than we are today and the old stories of gods and kings could have been the technological advancements before humanity had to reset due to such a catastrophic tragedy. Definitely one of the most puzzling mysteries on the planet is that of the Great Pyramids of Giza. The sheer size, precision and manpower required to build such a colossal structure is nearly impossible even in the modern era, which makes it all the more mysterious that an ancient culture, such as one of the first civilizations ever to arise, had the engineering capacity and means to create the massive pyramids of Giza. For a reference to the size of the pyramids, each block of the colossal structure weighs roughly 2.5 metric tons, with over 2.3 million blocks making up the entirety of the structure. Not only did this require 315 blocks to be moved in place each day for the next 20 years, but to accomplish such a building scale of delivering the large stones and moving them into place even today would be an almost impossible feat unable to be matched. If a stone wall was made to be two feet high and four inches wide, using the blocks of the pyramid at Giza, the wall would wrap around the circumference of the entire world. Not only this, but the blocks were made with such perfect precision that each block appears to be an exact clone in size to the rest of the blocks of the pyramid. Meaning the cut of each stone was so perfect, it would be impossible to slide something as thin as a piece of paper between any two stones. The only way to accomplish such a precision cut in the modern era would be to rely on laser guiding and cutting. As new discoveries and mapping of the pyramids continued, even more mysterious findings were made. Archaeologists and Egyptologists found high trace amounts of chemical compounds throughout the shafts of the pyramids that have the ability to have generated a massive amount of hydrogen by utilizing commonly found base chemicals in the region leading some researchers to believe that the pyramids themselves could have once been powerful hydrogen generators capable of supplying electricity and energy similar to modern-day power plants. Considering no other explanations for the trace chemicals have been put forward with any success, it appears to be the only standing theory relative to explaining any purpose the pyramids had, considering not a single body or artifact had been found inside the structures, including chambers never previously opened inside the colossal structures, Whatever theory you subscribe to, the nature of the pyramids are not just a mystery of Egypt, but a mystery of the history of humanity. So, what do you make of these strange discoveries? And how do you think the ancient Egyptians were able to achieve some of the things they did? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos.